there's a missing lean principle. I'm Paul. I want to holler at you a little bit about this, what I mean by a missing lean principle. What is the lean principle that's missing? It's lean forward. Okay, so it's it's a little bit of a plan words, right? Lean principles are about slim lean, as in like less lean. Uh, and huge respect to that whole body of uh, thinking and work, but also leaning, as in leaning forward. Leaning, right? Leaning forward means to be, amongst other things, invested in other people. Um, and if you think about the lean principles and how it worked at one of the, the way it worked out in manufacturing, there was an and on cord and people could pull this when the assembly line, there was something really wrong and everybody would come together and just try to fix that problem, right? Make sure that if it was critical for the chain to continue to function properly, that any particular major issue in, in a particular part of that chain, uh, that it was worth the time and the energy of other people to invest in that just for a brief moment to swarm. And leaning forward, I'll talk about what I mean in just a second. It's so important, especially when you're working together with lots of people, whether it's you think you're on your own, you're never on your own. There's always other people that either depend on you or you depend on them. So this applies to everyone, everyone. So what is lean forward, right? Well, first off, characteristics of lean forward behavior is your attentiveness. As you're watching this, you're probably doing email. Hello, come back, right? Um, it's purposeful, right? Leaning forward is purposeful. Um, you, you're not accidentally doing this thing. You're doing it on purpose. You're engaged about what, what you're leaning forward into, um, you know, whether somebody's talking to you or otherwise. And, and it turns out that engaged is also in part invested in what they're saying, right? It's a signal that I am paying attention to what you are saying, right? How many times have we felt like people aren't paying attention? You know, like in life, meetings, whatever. Um, that's not a good feeling. So a couple of examples of uh, forward, lean forward uh, is, you know, if you've ever seen uh, the way that uh, folks in Japan, in business in Japan, um, conduct themselves in a meeting, they typically sit up because for one thing, good for your breath, right? Good to be able to get oxygen, to think clearly and stuff. But also it shows attentiveness. It shows purposeful paying attention to somebody. It looks a lot more engaged. So it's a signal to other people that they are, that you are engaged in them and they are engaged in you. Uh, you can also think like, you know, taking a boat out or sailing, right? How do you get power? Oftentimes you get power from the wind, from the wind leaning into you or for your boat leaning into a particular wave or crest, right? That's where the power comes from, is a lean, a lean in. Um, I've heard leaders talk about putting forward tension on uh, certain topics, teams, folks. And all that really means is like, put the goal a little bit further so that there's a little bit of a tension, like a like an elastic rubber band that's stretched out, it wants to come back. So putting that out a little further so that there's an acceleration of like getting to the meaningful goal, forward tension. Um, and I would say that the forward, uh, leaning forward is like publishing or expressing your mode, right? Which mode is your brain working in um, or, or your intent to work in a particular mode about the thing that, that you're paying attention to. What's the opposite of lean forward? Well, <laughs> it's lean back. It's lean back. Mm. I'm disengaged about what you're saying. It's not, I'm not invested in what you're saying. I'm not receptive maybe to what you're saying. I'm disinterested, meh. And ultimately it's the attitude of do nothing. See, if I don't say anything and I just lean back here and I just watch you do your thing, especially in a group, I can get away with that. Maybe in certain cultures, that's all that happens most of the time. Why is this a danger, right? Why is lean back a danger? 
it usually ends up being that the people who are leaning back don't help to progress the conversation, right? That that mode doesn't help to progress the conversation or the dialogue. If anything, you sit back and then the one thing that you do say or something is basically, no, we can't do this because, or it's a blocker. Or essentially that attitude leads to, if you're there, you're probably a stakeholder to the conversation. Otherwise, why are you even there, right? <laughs> why, why do you deserve to be in a conversation if you have no meaningful part in that conversation? Um, and if the only meaningful part you have is to say no about something or can't happen or won't happen or can't done, that's kind of a negative way to, to perceive the whole situation. And I know there are different personality types. You know, there's a lot of introspective folks out there, uh, extroverted, introverted, those kind of things. And not everybody wants to talk the whole meeting, right? But just think about it. If you're just sitting back the whole time and then the one thing that you have is something like we can't do this because or the negative or what about this, it's gonna seem like you're not invested in the progress of the dialogue. If anything, you're just trying to block it. Um, another danger about lean back is that it's 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 like you don't accept any responsibility for anything. And you know what? That that might be okay because maybe you're not responsible for the thing, right? But it's certainly not like when somebody's leaning backward, they're not looking for opportunities to help other people and say, look, I have a little bandwidth, and maybe this is the most material thing that I can do amongst the many things that maybe you need done. Let me pick one of those things. That certainly doesn't happen with lean back attitude, right? Um, and ultimately, this all leads to bad relationships with people. It, it doesn't really help a relationship to grow or, or for better collaboration and communication to happen. Worse, sometimes it makes it where people don't want to work with you if you're always leaning back. So not everybody always has the, the feeling uh, or the privilege, but everybody who's invited to something should at least have the right to ask the questions. Should this be said? You know, something pops in your mind. Should it be said? Should it be said by me, right? That person that thought of it. And should it be said now? Does it need to be said now? So if it passes all those things, you have the right to be part of that situation and not lean back and lean forward. Um, and what and why lean forward is is actually not just important but very imperative is let's go back through right blocking but no process bad relationships it's a sign of respect for other people in the meeting and it builds up rather than breaks down relationships and collaboration and understanding of each other uh, it also denotes focus right uh, focus on the particular thing, which actually helps with clear and proper decision making. And then context, right? It helps you get context when you're paying attention. It helps you remember to capture that context and ultimately to help close out that thing in a good way, right? Like, you know, here's an idea. What do we do about it? Do this, closed. Okay, moving on and so on and so forth. So, how do you actually lean forward? Well, sit up, sit up and breathe. That's it. Good night, folks. No, I'm just kidding. So it's, yes, definitely sit up. Maybe if you want to incline yourself a little, you know, we spend a lot of time hunched over or whatever on a computer or whatnot. Some people naturally do that more. I certainly do, right? But definitely, purposely and mindfully sit up and breathe. Uh, the other one is eye contact, right? I'm reading a couple of notes here. So I'm trying to keep eye contact with the camera as much as I can. But when somebody is paying attention to you, it doesn't look like this. Sure, yep. See what I mean? Eye contact matters if it's something that, that the, the receiver can receive. Um, you gotta remove distractions, right? I already had an email come through or something on my phone. I should have silenced it. Imagine if you could silence your phone in an important meeting. Okay, well, not all meetings are important. Okay, well then why are you going to them, <laughs> right? So let's imagine that you are there for a reason. And so therefore, if you want to focus and retain context and show respect, you probably need to close the laptop a little unless you're presenting or unless you're taking notes and that's the way you do it. 
which, oh, by the way, leads to the next thing. Aside from not letting your phone and your computer distract you, how many people go into the meeting and there's like 30 laptops open? Are there 30 presenters? Are all 30 of them taking notes? Yikes, I don't know. Um, probably not. They're probably doing half of them are doing email. So if possible, close the lids. Don't have to mandate that, but whatever. Also writing notes, actually writing them, using your hands if you can, right? That it, it evokes not only the, the mode two or system two mind about the retrospective, it captures something, but muscle memory does engage your brain in a slightly different way. So you might not think you're a note taker, but you know, it's just a life skill. You could learn it. <laughs> um, and the more you take notes, the more, the better you are at it, right? Um, and also the last thing about leaning forward, how you would do that is look for the right and polite and the, the, the proper time to ask questions. Right? If you're paying attention and you're thinking about it at the same time, questions might arise that's great for notes that you can follow up with if you don't feel like, you know, and some people have to take a little while to think about something, that's cool too. But just be looking for those opportunities, those micro moments that what's going on, that the speaker, the, the, the presenter or the group has a space where you can actually put in a question. Just looking for that, looking for that uh, will sometimes show you that there are meetings that there is no space. And that is an important feedback too, to the people who are running the meeting or to whoever is, is in charge of delivering that produces meetings on your calendar. You know what I mean? Like it's important feedback to know that if there is not a space that you feel comfortable to be able to be engaged in what you are required to be in, then there's something broken there and that needs resolving. How to evoke this in others, last thing, right? Uh, it's one thing for you to practice it, but if you're the one presenting or you're the one speaking, how on earth can you get other people to do a little bit of this, right? And, and kind of foster and maybe micro coach even, like you don't even, people don't even know that you're encouraging them to do a better thing. Well, first thing is ask, <laughs> ask the group to pause their other things. But what you're really doing is not telling them you need to pause your other things. No, -uh. you're asking their permission. And maybe you use the exact words. May I have your permission and your attention, you know, uh, for a certain period of time. And by that, what I'd like to do is ask, you know, if we could close our things and, you know, that feels a little bit weird, but the goal there is to get their permission to get them to say, yes, I will do this thing, right? I will pay attention to you in a way that really will help me and help you. Um, so whatever, however you do that. Um, make the thing worth it, right? If you're running a meeting, like first off, big, long meetings, people's attention wanes pretty quickly. So, you know, I'm not a big fan of big, long meetings unless there is a purposeful format that engages people all throughout and there are proper breaks, right? But let's imagine that a meeting goes for a half an hour, right? Even through that half an hour, you really need to make it worth it for all the people to be there and be paying attention. Because if, let's say there's 10 people in a meeting and you're only talking, three people are only talking about things that matter to them, guess what the other seven people are gonna do? They're gonna become disengaged, right? They're not gonna be invested in the conversation, disinterested, and they're gonna go off to email, Slack, whatever, right? Um, so you really have to make sure and mindfully run and uh, invest in the people in the meeting to make sure that it's worth it for them throughout the entire meeting. And like I said before, give people breaks, right? Give, actually say, let's breathe for a second, right? Let's take a few moments and kind of like sit up, and, you know, stand up and do, do some, a, a quick stretch break, right? So with that in mind, leaning forward, it's the missing lean principle. <laughs> Ciao, friends.